Support for Steppin' Out comes in part from the Kristovich family in honor of Mary Lou and Bill Kristovich. This program is sponsored in part by the Eugenie and Joseph Jones Family Foundation, a local foundation proud to support the arts and culture in the greater New Orleans area. Scott Laborde and welcome to Stepping Out, spotlighting the New Orleans area's arts and entertainment scene. Seated at our table tonight, Tim McNally, host of The Wine Show on WGSO Radio. He's here to tell us all about this year's New Orleans International Wine Awards and Consumer Tasting taking place right here at WYS. Welcome. Hello Thank you. there. Costume designer Allison Parker and friend here to tell us about next week's Slave Rebellion reenactment, three years in the making. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Randy Fortell here to discuss the Improv Conference of New Orleans and Festival of Ideas. Welcome back, Randy. Thank you. And making his Stepping Out debut, President of the World Trade Center, Tom Spears who will be telling us about the history uh, about Louisiana's World Trade Center and the internet, the upcoming International Trade Week. Welcome. Thank you. Poppy Tooker and, Alice, and, of course, Alan Mason will be returning next week. But first up, Tim. Thank you, Peggy. Yes, yes. How many wines are we going to have? Over 400. Mm. Woo. There might be something in there you'll find you like. Okay. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Possibly. So give us the skinny. Well, the New Orleans International Wine Awards was a uh, birth of an idea because we felt that we were not making the right statement about our city or to this industry. So we thought having a wine competition built around our city uh, would be a good idea. It had to be an international competition because of who New Orleans is. So it wasn't just domestic wines. We are bringing wines in from all over the world and uh, we've had real good response. This is our second year, so we're bringing in judges from all over America to evaluate the wines. We have a lot of New Orleanians this year on our roster of judges uh, from our grand restaurants, and so uh, we'll be doing that early uh, the week of November the 4th. Uh, there'll be three days of evaluations and discussions and judgings. But on Thursday, November the 7th, yes. we will be here at WYS, very excited about that, and there will be a consumer tasting, so the consumers can come in, taste all the wines that were entered into the competition, certainly taste the award-winning wines, and see if they can find something they like or if they agree with the judges. So uh, folks can buy a ticket. What's yes. the website? Uh, NolaInternationalWine.com. Oh, right. Well, Tim, how long have you been in the wine biz or aficionado? Expert? I got in when I was eight years old. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's, it's been a while. And, it's been a while, uh, huh? Actually, my wife Brenda and I have enjoyed this very much. She grew up in the business here in New Orleans, and uh, she was my uh, apostle and entry into the industry mm -hmm. and, uh, and got me going here, and uh, I still love her. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. Well, good luck with everything. Look forward to being there. Thank and once you. again next week, yay! yay <laughs> Looking forward yeah, to well, it. Thank you. And Allison, Allison, of course, you have been very busy over the years working on movies and TV shows, but this is a project I know very much of a, um, a cause celeb. Mm -hmm. Three, at least three years in the making. Huh? Yeah, and actually it started uh, six years ago, the initial uh, project concept, and then I came on board as the costume designer three years ago. Um, we started out basically doing research for about the first year and prototyping, and then last year, about a year ago, we started into full-fledged production and um, doing sewing circles. We did sewing circles every uh, week where we had people from the community, volunteers, um, come and help us sew costumes. Now set the stage for those who are not familiar with with an event that everybody should be familiar with. Right? Yeah, yeah. So 1811. 1811. So um, we're recreating the the revolt that happened in 1811 with Charles Deslandes at the Andrew Plantation. Um, so as they went, um, the army of the enslaved gathered to fight for their freedom. Um, they went from plantation to plantation and in between picked up 
um, some of the enslaved that were runaways or lived in the woods or swamps, so the Maroons. So the Maroons and the slaves um, marched for approximately two days um, until they got just somewhere outside of Kenner. Um, there was a small um, army that was brewing in New Orleans at the time, uh, Fort St. Charles, um, to try to get uh, some weapons to be able to meet the army that was coming down and um, met some unfortunate circumstances and weren't able to um, complete their mission for freedom. Mm. Now, uh, many of the slaves who were in part of the, uh, the uprising were killed. A lot were killed, yeah. yeah. They were executed and some went to trial. Some had to go back to the plantation they were at, but there was a lot that, mm -hmm. um, and some actually got to flee. But now, there were we've a lot been showing, of course, some of your sketches. Tell us about that process and some of the photos, too. And we should uh, credit Dred Scott, the artist. Yes, and yes. Of course, people yes. know the name Dred Scott very much of uh, being a civil uh, uh, rights hero from a long time ago. But, yeah. um, but uh, you know, what, in terms of your efforts and refashioning, did you? tell the people who are many are volunteering to be reenactors to come up with a basic white shirt and how they would reconfigure it. Give us that process. Yep, so through that research part, um, we kind of discredited a lot of the, the books and the material that are local to the United States um, because there's this fantasy about th what slave life was that doesn't really like jive with reality. So we went actually to other countries, um, uh, Brazil, uh, the Caribbean, Cuba, and Haiti for visual research. Um, and then actually looked at the runaway ads. There's a lot of runaway ads in the gazettes during that time that had a very um, uh, descriptive uh, description of what the slaves were wearing when they ran away. So it would say, you know, um, when, when this man ran away, he had uh, black pantaloons on with a white cotton shirt. So we started to be able to match the two things up where they would marry. So what I had with the visual research um, from other countries, marrying that up with the written research that we found in the runaway ads. Um, and we have two different costumes, really, that we're going with. So there's a plantation costume, so that's the enslaved that were on the plantation, which were allotted a Negro cloth, um, which is a horrible, nasty, white, coarse cloth, which they got one a year, uh, one pair of pants and one shirt. And then there's the Maroons, who would live out in the swamps, uh, the runaways. And so their items are a little bit more colorful, so they might have found those, they might have stolen those. Mm -hmm. um, some items were hand-me-downs, um, and fabric being like part of their treasures, some, some pieces that they wore, like the tin yarn, for example, or a sash might be um, an extravagant fabric. So we have the, the plantations who are in the all off-white, and then we have the colorful maroons, so, and they join together in this reenactment. Wow. Now, of course, we're talking about the 8th and 9th. It'll be a two-day walk because yep. it's, it's so many miles and, you know, over 26 miles. So slave-revolt.com slave for details because we also know the path and, uh, you know, and more details about it by early next week. Too. Exactly. Yep. So yeah. there'll be some places for the public to view. There's also going to be some of the reenactment of the skirmish with the infantry that came from Baton Rouge and from... New Orleans and there'll be some uh, of the plantation owners that actually we will show them fleeing and mm -hmm. some skirmishes also there but there will be information as far as uh, public viewings uh, really And your t-shirt sort of says it all here exactly. too, doesn't it? Exactly, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, 1811. Yeah. But it's really one of those moments in history that a lot of people aren't even aware of. Are yeah, they? yeah, totally. Even here in Louisiana, people from here. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much oh, for thank details. You. Thank and you. I know you're also very involved with your own nonprofit. We'll talk about that towards the end of the show. Yep, yep, thank yep, you. yep. Thanks. <laughs> Glad nice. you're here. Thank you. <laughs> and New Orleans Magazine's quiz queen, Julia Street, has a question for us. Last time, Paul Rome told us the original uh, team name of the New Orleans Pelicans and where the team played its home games for two seasons after Hurricane Katrina. The answer is the New Orleans Hornets and Oklahoma City. Now tonight's question. One cemetery appropriate for this um, All Saints Day weekend, okay, was actually one cemetery was a former racetrack nearby. Another cemetery is known for its odd name. What are they? Email your answers to stepanout at wys.org. Our prize is a year subscription to Louisiana Life magazine and a pair of free admission passes to either the Audubon Zoo, Aquarium of the Americas, or the Butterfly Garden and Insectarium. You can go to wys slash out for our online calendar, including, of course, a reminder that Bridge House, Grace House's March for Recovery, celebrating the recovery of those who have overcome addiction 
in honoring those we've lost to that disease. It's the second line taking place. That's tomorrow, November 2nd at Palmer Park at 1045 a.m. There are other festivities beginning at 930. You can register online at bridgehouse.org or in person near the uh, back entrance of the park on South Carrollton and Claiborne. You can also link to WYS's YouTube channel to see our program. Now, Randy, improv. Now, we're, we're talking about the improv conference. We're not talking about comedy, are we? It's not comedy. It's not necessarily jazz, though we do have a jazz panel. Um, improvisation touches anything where creativity or innovation is involved. And uh, we, will have, we will explore improvisation across the disciplines, across the arts throughout the weekend. You Next have a weekend. lot of exciting people. Yes, looking we ahead, do. we wanted to give folks time to, uh, to uh, get their tickets and, and learn about the schedule. You've got Michael Pollan. Michael Pollan, uh, the great New Yorker writer who's written a lot of great books about food, but has now written a book about psychedelics, How to Change Your Mind. Ooh. And I had an intuition, I need to read that book, and sure enough, there are rapport between my vision of what improvisation does and, and, and his vision of what psychedel how psychedelics works. Mm -hmm. It's uh, really fascinating. We'll also have on that panel next Friday night at Loyola's Roussel Hall, we'll have New Orleanian ethnobotanist Mark Plotkin, uh, who does wonderful work in, in the northeastern Amazon. Uh, some of it probably has to do with psychedelics. Um, <laughs> maybe, so we'll, we'll maybe. be exploring psychedelics and creativity. I'm sorry, improvisation and creativity <laughs> uh, next Friday night. Well, you also have, ta I mean, it's, it's amazing, heavy hitters. Jules Pfeiffer, the cartoonist. The 90-year-old <gasps> Jules Pfeiffer, who you may have heard on WWNO last week, speaking to Susan Larson, a very lively conversationalist. And he'll be interviewed about uh, uh, cartooning and improvisation by uh, Michael Tisserand, who wrote the great book on Crazy Cat about the New Orleanian who passed his wife yeah. out in L.A. Um, to, to do his cartoon series about Crazy Cat. Um, and so they, they will be exploring. Uh, Jules Pfeiffer is a, a legend, and uh, the, the uh, Smithsonian calls him that. And um, he not only is a great cartoonist, but he wrote novels, he wrote uh, plays, well, plays, he, he Little wrote Murders? screenplay, Was Little Murders. Little Murders. Yeah. He wrote the screenplay for Popeye, one of my favorites, mm. Altman's, I did not know that. Altman's Popeye. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and now he's writing graphic novels. And um, so we are really pleased to have him here. Yes. And we're, he's not, he, he, we are going to toast his 90th year after his his interview mm -hmm. that interview is at the Freeman Auditorium out at Tulane on the new on the Newcomb quad mm -hmm. And um, so we're very excited about that. Mm. Now, for more information, most of the events are free. Some are ticketed. Uh, uh, Friday and Saturday night are fifteen dollars, just so people a have a have yeah. a mm -hmm. make a commitment to come. And uh, all day Saturday, we have panels on race, uh, uh, jazz, drumming, uh, food, um, and um, what's the fourth? Um, I'm blanking. More improv. <laughs> more improv, and. Um, uh -huh. And then uh, those are all free and at the Jazz Museum at the foot of Esplanade. Oh, yeah, at the Mint, of course. And so ImprovConferenceNOLA.com for all the details. Huh? Right. Now, just to, uh, let's back up here, though. Mm -hmm. But, Randy, there's a reason why you're interested in improv, and that is there was a certain uh, thesis, as I recall. Well, well yeah, I wrote, a, I wrote a book on improv, literary improvisation. I call it A Taste for Chaos. Uh, available. The Art of Literary <laughs> Improvisation, available uh, all online in all, all bookstores. bookstores. And, uh -huh. um, it, you know, it's pretty bit much been my life's work to explore this. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it has to do with uh, having parents who were uh, uh, great improvisers. Well, I think yeah. so. And, of course, people should not miss your memoir of your parents. Oh, and let's, you. of course, mention that. <laughs> uh, the Gorilla Man and the Empress of Steak. Who a New were? Orleans a New Orleans family <laughs> memoir. My father ran for mayor on the platform, the zoo needed a gorilla, 
uh, in safari outfit, <laughs> pith helmet. Uh, I was away at college, thank God. <laughs> and my mother uh, founded Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Yes, the amazing Ruth Fertel. Well, we're so glad you're with us, and congratulations you. for thank year you. number two. And moving on to Tom. Tom, my goodness, the World Trade Center, which to me has been very much a part of our cultural history, and there's a special anniversary. But talk about those early years for a yes. moment. Yes, well, Peggy, thank you for having us. Sure. Um, you know, it was a rich um, history with regards to, um, you know, our presence in the city. We started uh, way back in the World War II um, era with a um, mindset of economic development, kind of like before that became a buzzword. And so our general manager of the Port of New Orleans, Archie Jewell at the time, um, saw the amount of cargo um, going out of the port. Um, it was an abundance amount, and the State War Department cited us for being one of the most efficient ports hmm. in the nation with regards to the war effort. Uh, so understanding that, he wanted to figure out a way, once the war ended, to capitalize on, on this bountiful amount of uh, business that was going through the port. So he had an idea, and he brought it to Toastmasters. Uh, this was around 1942, and pitched the idea in a three-minute speech. The person who was head of the Toastmasters said, you need to meet William Zetzman and Rudolf Heck. William Zetzman was the um, owner of the 7-Up Bottling Company way back when his family had that. And then uh, Rudolf Heck was the uh, chairman of Hibernia National Bank, also was in shipping, had a couple of shipping companies. One most prominent was Mississippi Shipping, which then became Delta Steamship Company. Um, but once that idea was pitched to them, the idea of actually um, forming the International House, mm -hmm. which is the genesis of the World Trade Center. Well, we should came say that we have some pictures uh, uh, sure. from the past, like right, the internet. We, some folks remember those in full screens, and the history, of course, uh, of all of it is so important. But it was a combination of organizations to, for the name World Trade Center. And, it was. The yeah. other organization that was part of it was mm -hmm. the International Trade Mart. And so a couple of years after the establishment mm -hmm. of the International House, mm -hmm. Um, same individuals that were involved with the creation of the International House was, um, they were part of the International Trade Mart, but that idea with regards to, is a little bit different idea from an economic development perspective in advancing the port. Mm -hmm. um, the idea of the International Trade Mart was to bring importers and exporters into the city, foreign from other countries, to pitch their goods and services directly mm -hmm. to the end purchasers. Well, you've also got, so you're talking about the past, but now the present, you've got a special events coming up, a, a gala? We do, we do. So Louisiana International Trade Week is next week. It starts on November 5th. It runs through November 8th. We're doing a half-day conference in Baton Rouge that'll focus on transportation and energy with a keynote speaker from Tellurian, which is a LNG company that has a development down in Lake Charles. It's over a billion dollars uh, in economic uh, impact. And then we have a reception at the Port of New Orleans Wednesday evening that uh, we'll have PJ's Ballard Brands there talking about their coffees and how they import and uh, the coffee industry. And then Thursday is a half-day conference in New Orleans that focuses on um, uh, advancement in trade, trade technology um, in transportation. We also have a luncheon keynote uh, speaker for that who's with the Brentonwood uh, foundation, and he's a visiting scholar from University of Georgia, Don Johnson, and then we'll also have a high-level executive from FedEx talking about um, the right. advancements in trade. And a gala okay. to kind and of the tie gala, all up. The gala is <laughs> is uh, November eighth, okay. and uh, it is a um, you know celebration of trade, um, you know, helping businesses here grow and scale internationally, mm -hmm. and uh, we also feature our. Uh, uh, Eugene Schreiber Award recipient. Oh, who was so beloved and he was. remember him well. So, uh, in terms of website, WTCNO.org? Correct. For all the info? Yes, yes. <laughs> and it's open to everybody, too. I mean, you know, it to, is, to, it to is. register and, of course, for all of these events. There's an uh, area to register for those events. Yeah. We'd love to, you know, have a lot of turnout. And it's not just New Orleans, it's Baton Rouge as well. We serve the state. 
Um, so there happy to have everybody participate. And of course, other names cheer. Paul, Paul Fabry was such a uh, large part yeah. of it. Bob Carr for a while too. Exactly. A lot of wonderful names and its history. So congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. yeah. You look like a little kid to be the president. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, um, I've, yeah. I've been blessed with good genes. Um, but okay. I will say this, that uh, I am an old Likes Brothers Steamship employee. So All right. That dates All me right. right there. But, you know, I do want to mention about uh -huh. Paul Fabry and uh -huh. it's quite interesting. So. Paul became uh, managing director of the International House in 1962. Mm -hmm. And it was through his efforts that by 1968, he brought to forth the idea of a World Trade Center. Oh. We are actually the very first World Trade Center ever oh. in, Isn't in, in, that in a network of over 500 yeah. World Trade Centers right. across the globe. And that's the World Trade Center Association. Huh. Mm -hmm. We're the very first one. Wow. And that was through the efforts of Paul Fabry. Okay. And bringing that to, to fruition. You, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> and now it is time for our artist spotlight. Tonight we are highlighting the work of Baton Rouge plein air painter Charles G. Smith. And this is, we have Canefield Corner and we have Evening Sun and Cypress. Smith enjoys paintings of Louisiana landscapes that are just filled with light and lots and lots of detail. His work will be on view at Gallery 600 Julia through November the 30th. And the opening reception is tomorrow night from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Go to Gallery 600 Julia. That's it, Julia and Camp, uh, for more information. We wanted to remind you, by the way, that the NOLA Project's Legend of Sleepy Hollow will be continuing in the Best of Sculpture Garden uh, on Sunday afternoon. That's the next, uh, next performance. And we want to uh, really, really congratulate them for 15 years. And we'll, you'll be hearing a little bit more about them in the coming weeks. And the play runs till November the 10th. You can go to nolaproject.com for more information on that. And now it is time for our picks. Tim. Uh, may I suggest that everyone attend our wine tasting this Thursday night, November the 7th, right here at WYS. Okay, Allison. Uh, the Slave Revolt reenactment, November yes. 8th and 9th, starting in Laplace. And Rick Ragnola. And Rick uh, Ragnola is a part of it by uh, repurposing clothing and uh, using existing fabrics, so there's almost no waste on this project. Okay, now you're doing work at the Kip, one of the KIPP schools, huh? We have, Sometimes. yeah. We've been helping them repurposing clothing and uh, using fabric to create the Lion King production this year. They worked very hard on yeah. that, too. Yeah. Randy. The Improv Conference is getting a running start this weekend, Sunday, at 3 p.m. at NOMA. Uh, we, we, we will be screening a film called Esplanade, an improvised film by David Gamble and Jonathan Fralick, which explores our wonderful, beloved Esplanade Avenue f from the river all the way to the park. And I just love the idea that we're screening it at <laughs> NOMA, which is right there at the which end of perfect. Esplanade. So that's at 3 o'clock. It's yeah. free at NOMA, and um, it's called Esplanade. All right. Thank you. Tom. Louisiana International Trade Week, uh, 5th through the 7th, and, of course, the gala on the 8th. Mm -hmm. um, the New Orleans Trade Week programming starts on Wednesday, uh, which has the Port of New Orleans uh, reception at 6. Mm -hmm. The half-day conference is at the Marriott Convention okay. Center, which is at 930. And, of course, the gala starts at 630, and that's at the Harris Theater. Very and nice. we have great entertainment. Delfeo Marcellus and his Uptown Jazz Ooh. Orchestra will be providing entertainment and, of course, a silent auction and programming and awards. Sounds great. Thank great. you, Tom. Thank and you. now time for my picks, the Historic New Orleans Collection. They have a symposium called Uncorked, A History of Wine in New Orleans. It is taking place tomorrow, that's November the 2nd, at the Williams Research Center at 410 Charter Street. And there are sessions from 10 a.m. to 12.45 p.m. in a reception and wine tasting taking place afterwards until about 2.30. Registration is required. Go to myhnoc.org to learn more about that. And Tim, you're involved with that, aren't I'm you? I'm moderating the panel discussion. All yes. right, very good. Can't and there's a special dinner yeah. at Tableau, too. What'd you say? Can't get rid of him. I know, you really can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And author. We made about town. <laughs> Kathleen Schrank will be discussing her new juvenile fiction novel, The Case of the Left Handed Trombone. She's going to be with us next week, including with the Potbelly Pig, who's a, a part of this book. So we'll that's a tease for next week. That's at 9 to 9.45 at the State Library. 
in Baton Rouge because it's a literary uh, Louisiana Literary Festival that's up in uh, Baton Rouge this weekend. Also giving a talk tomorrow at the same time is John Pope, Susan Langenhenny, and Danielle Del Sol talking about their brand new book, Building on the Past, Saving mm -hmm. Historic New Orleans mm -hmm. and the State Capitol. And it's in the, they're in the State Capitol building. Both talks, as I said, are part of the Louisiana Book Festival in Baton Rouge. Go to louisianabookfest.org for more information and to see a full lineup of events, too. Uh, also tomorrow, British Pub Night at the Chapel of the Holy Comforter from 4 to 8 p.m. at 2220 Lakeshore Drive. That's right near Elysian Fields. The event includes a pub themed, of course, food, drink, beer, a silent auction, and much more. And your ticket is just $5, and then you buy your food separately. Go to dbeinla.org for more information. It's a fundraising event for many charities that they help out. God bless those daughters of the British Empire. We, we do appreciate that, too. Also, we wanted to let you know, Alan asked me to pass on the fact that Dear Evan Hansen, uh, their schedule has been changed slightly because, sadly, because of the Hard Rock Hotel catastrophe. So uh, check the Sanger, uh, of course, the Sanger website for more information on that. And so good to see you all. Thank and thank you, you yeah. for watching, stepping out. Good night. This program is sponsored in part by the Eugenie and Joseph Jones Family Foundation, a local foundation proud to support the arts and culture in the greater New Orleans area. Support for Steppin' Out comes in part from the Kristovich family in honor of Mary Lou and Bill Kristovich.